great. It's Saturday night, and I've already shot a couple videos. Uh, one of them was about the uh, Bunhaven 25-year-old that I got from Mike from Mike, uh, Mike and Billy's uh, Whiskey Reviews. He also sent me a Glendronach 21 Parliament which was bottled at uh, 48%. And I have done some whiskeys in between those two, and um, I'm getting uh, pleasantly inebriated. I'm not feeling any pain of any kind. And at my age, sometimes you feel pains of some kind. I also have here another one that was sent to me by Mike. This is an Octomore 7.1. Now, I probably will never find this on a shelf. Or if I did find it, I would get sticker shock and die of a heart attack because I cannot freaking afford this stuff. Octomore 7.1, 208 part per million, five year old. Well, I'm going to pour me a dram of this right now. I know there are people who might want me to do this live. I might go live later if I'm still sober enough to do so. But I suspect that I might be uh, even more inebriated than I am right now, even though I am taking my time. And taking it slow. Let's put this side by side, sideways, sideways like this so that it will drain every last drop. Oh, ho, ho, I smell the peat already. There's a little bit on my finger from the cork. Yeah, ha, ha. And I got some water here. I cannot stress more the importance of remaining hydrated when you drink whiskey. Because if you are hydrated enough, you will not feel any pain the morning after when you wake up again. I got the black tie going because I'm signifying that this is uh, beyond the usual scope of the uh, Food Quick channel. And this is usually more than what I can afford. So I, I wear a black tie in your honor, um, Mike. Mm-hmm. I'm getting peat smoke. I'm getting quite a lot of citrus. I'm getting, oh, lime, orange, lemon, that kind of thing. Maybe a bit of grapefruit as well. A lot of citrus here. A lot of citrus coming in with the peat smoke. How strong did we say this was? Uh, 59.5, so like almost 60% alcohol by volume. Let's see what kind of legs we got, if we got any at all. Uh, it's pretty viscous. Considering how clean these glasses are, it's very viscous. They're going down very slowly, if you can see those. Yes. Mm. That is delightful. Optimore is really nice. I just can't find it or afford it. So thanks once again, Mike. I appreciate this. So gesture of friendship. One of the nice things about a lot of the people who send me samples is that I ask them, can I send you something back that you would like? Is there anything that I have reviewed that you haven't seen or haven't tasted and would like a sample of? And it's, it's extremely rare that anyone says, yes, send me some Lafroig 15. Or send me some Tobermory 21. Or send me some 
Canadian club 40 year old. Mmm, the nose is nice. There's that peat smoke. That peat smoke is like a bonfire with, with hints of honey, honey smoked ham. thing about peat smoke is that after about 60% or, or 60 parts per million or so, our sensitivity towards it decreases so that you can have 150 uh, parts per million and it will be strong but it, you won't detect it as well as you will like 80 parts per million. And then you go over 200% Mm, 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 mm. And now I'm getting lime. Lots of lime. Lots and lots of lime. That's the that's the citrus component I'm getting right now. Lime. This is changes this changes as it goes. The lime is almost artificial like Irish spring soap. And it's raining pretty good outside. I can hear the raindrops on the ceiling or on the roof. If I went to the drain spout, it would be gushing down. Oh, okay. Lots of lime. So much lime that it smells almost artificial. That's definitely what the citrus is here. Lime, 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 lime. You may notice my mouth is a little bit open. It's a bit open when I nose this. And it's harsh, it's strong on the nose. No, oh, do some more of that. Why is somebody blowing off some firecrackers out in the distance, out, out there? Oh, that's right. Guy Fox Day and it's almost Halloween. Okay, it's Saturday. Halloween's on Wednesday. Why you do it now rather than on Wednesday? That's going to be a ridiculous night out on the road for me. Lime. Lime and... What's that other thing I'm getting out of there? I'm definitely getting a lot of lime. It's like an artificial lime. Lime and a little bit of lemon. And fireworks out in the distance. I probably won't be able to see them because we got we got rain. I can hear the rain on the roof. Okay, so lemon and lime. As I'm going along, the lemon seems to be getting stronger and the lime seems to be seems to be getting weaker. Hmm. And yet there's a little something else in there with the lemon and lime. I'm having trouble trouble pinpointing it. I I it reminds me of Irish spring soap. Maybe if I take a sip, I will have a better chance of pinpointing what it is that I'm smelling.
Åh. Oh. Åh. Oh. Okej. Okay. Bonfire and wood. Wood on the tongue. Wood and strong lime and so strong lemon. And wood. It almost dries the tongue out with the wood. Water, because that's what it's there for. Ooh. Speaking of water, I think maybe this would benefit from a little bit. Let me put one spoonful in there. Let me put two spoonfuls in there. And I'm sorry if I'm committing sacrilege for some people, but that 59.5% um, is a little much. Even for me, where I'm happy to go to about 51, 52, but, oh, the sense, the, uh, what I'm getting on the nose was so intense. But it kept changing every time I took a breath, which was very good. Oh, that might be a little more like it. Let's uh, look at the legs as they go down now. Slowly, slowly, it's viscous. And that's even after two, two spoons full of water. It, it is watered down. It doesn't quite have the intensity that it had before. But I'm still getting underneath the peat, which is not overpowering, and it's not surprising because as the uh, the peat smoke level is higher than about 50 60 percent your sensitivity to sensitivity to it diminishes and it you smell the peat smoke less than you did before once again as i got before neat I'm getting quite a lot of uh, lime. Quite a hefty heaping dollop of lime. Lime, perhaps with a tinge of lemon. Now that I've added some water, I'm getting a little bit of oak, which I wasn't getting before. Before the lime and the lemon, the citrus was so overpowering that I could get nothing else. Now, like I said, there's some oak and smoke and bonfire. It's similar to the smoke that I get in Port Charlotte, but it's much more concentrated. And there's a lot more citrus, a lot more lime than I would get in Port Charlotte. But of course, the alcohol percentage is a lot higher too. Mm. There's a rich 
oak flavor. So rich that all I taste right now is oak. There's the citrus, and there's the lemon, and there's the peat smoke. The peat smoke is all about dissipated. It's just about moved off to the sides. And I'm getting on the top. I'm getting some lemon and lime, mostly lime, and a little tinge of lemon to it. But left on the palate, on the tongue, is the dryness of the oak. Now the question is that dryness. There's nothing ashy. It's just oak and dry. But it's not ashy, like as if it's been burnt. Let's do that again. It doesn't remind me of smoke, what's left on the tongue. I wonder what kind of wood, what kind of barrels they used. If this is aged in ex-bourbon, I'm suspecting that it is ex-bourbon all the way. And the higher ABV has some means of extracting more flavor from the bourbon barrels than it would if it were a lower ABV. Interesting. Hmm. Still a lot of citrus and oak. There's a nuttiness, a nuttiness on the, the oak flavor. It's like ha hazelnuts. Now that I'm taking a, a sip of it, lime with a little bit of lemon on top. That seems to be evaporating off. And what I get underneath that is wood, oak wood with the nuttiness. The nuttiness is like hazelnuts. Quite interesting. I'm not getting any peat or smoke anymore. <coughs> that was a whiskey burp. Mostly what I'm getting right now is a nuttiness. Water again. And this is one of those cute little bottles from um, McAllen, where McAllen has the tiny little cork. So uh, Mike used one of these X McAllen bottles to put this Octomore in. Ah. Wow. Lime. Still a lot of lime, even though I put a whole bunch of water in it. I'm gonna, I think it can take another spoonful, don't you? Let's spoonful it again. Oh, there we are. This is such a strong, potent, potent whiskey. Okay. I'm still getting piles of lime, even though I've added some more water to this. Piles and piles of lime. Lime.
This is not your everyday sipping whiskey. Uh-uh. This is one that you've got to be patient with. And one that you've got to play around with to get to the point where it's enjoyable. Lime, once again. Lots of lime. Lots of citrus lime. Okay. I think I've exhausted all the peat smoke. That's just like evaporated. Taste. Wow. There's not much lime left right now, but I get a strong, overpowering taste of hazelnuts, stronger than as any hazelnuts I've ever had in my mouth. Uh, yesterday, or was it earlier today, I had a chocolate bar. It was a lint chocolate bar from Switzerland, and it was milk chocolate with hazelnuts and the hazelnuts are whole within this milk chocolate bar and the milk chocolate is delicious and the hazelnuts are wonderful right now this octomore 7.1 with a whole bunch of water put in it is reminding me of those hazelnuts that were in the lint hazelnut chocolate bar. But still there's some of that lime lingering on. And it's not subtle, it's right up your nose. Lime. Lime, lime, lime. Concentrated lime. Mm. I still have a mouthful of lime. And the finish, incredibly strong and dry hazelnuts. Hazelnuts out the yin-yang when it comes to the finish. And this was after three spoons of water, or was it four? And this is just lingering on this finish with the with the lime and the lemon. There's a little bit tinge of lemon on top of the lime. And hazelnuts. Dry hazelnuts. Ah! Oh. This is some luxury whiskey. Ah! Oh. But you got to be patient with it and give it lots of time and add enough water to make it so. I wonder, would more water do it any good? I'm going to try. I don't know what percentage I brought it down to, but it's in the 40s now. Another spoon of water. Citrus is still there. There's still a bit of bonfire smoke left. Just a hint. The sherry is still there if you take a good pull on it. 
I didn't mean sherry. Citrus. Citrus is what I meant. Citrus is there. Still a lot of lime. Tinge of lemon on top of that. And uh, maybe it's a little more lemony than uh, lime right now. Gonna taste it one more time. Wow. Wow. If anything, the aftertaste of hazelnuts is even stronger than it was before. Incredible this stuff is. Really incredible. And there's a little bit of saltiness too. A little bit of that sea spray. Just on the very end and it and if you look at it it's kind of cloudy <laughs> it's kind of cloudy it's got that scotch mist this is not colored and this is not chill filtered this is the real deal my friends this is the real deal and still, it's got so much wood, so much hazelnut to it. Ah. This is an uncompromising dram. I want to thank you once again, Mike, for sending me this incredible experience. Slanchima to you. Food quick. <laughs> Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>